Hi guys, Micah here with ebikeschool.com and today we're going to be talking about undercharging lithium battery cells to make them last for more cycles. Now the basic premise is this, by undercharging a lithium battery cell, that is not charging it up to its full voltage, which is normally 4.2 volts, you can actually make the cell last for more cycles. Now why would undercharging a battery cell make it last for more cycles? The answer has everything to do with the structure of a battery cell and the chemical reactions that take place inside of it. Now, if you have a copy of my book, DIY Lithium Batteries, go ahead and open it up to page 11. If you don't have a copy, that's fine. You can follow along with me. All right, so here's our structure of our cell. Here you can see that we've got the anode or negative terminal on one side, our cathode or positive terminal on the other. Uh, we've got a porous separator in the middle, and then the whole thing is bathing in an electrolyte gel. Now what happens is when you've got a fully charged battery and you start discharging it, these lithium ions are gonna go across the separator from the anode to the cathode. And then when you go to recharge your battery, the lithium ions are gonna pass back across the separator to the anode. Now what happens during charging is that the electrolyte starts oxidizing a little bit on the anode and it creates this plating effect. Now this happens very slowly, but it does happen each time you charge and it increases a little bit in speed when you're charging at a higher voltage. So by the time you reach 4.2 volts, this increases a little bit and you get more plating on the anode. Again, it's a small amount, but over time it adds up. This is also a factor of time. So the more time you spend sitting at 4.2 volts, the more plating you're gonna get on the anode side of the battery. Now, if you turn to page 110, I've got more info on how this reduced charging voltage can help extend the life of your battery cells. But since not everyone has my book, I'll just tell you what the basic idea is. Now, the whole idea here is that the plating of the negative electrode occurs at high voltages. And so we want to do what we can to avoid the amount of time that the battery cell spends at high voltages. Now, because lithium batteries last for, you know, many years, I haven't had the chance to do these tests myself and collect data, but we can use data that other people have collected. Now I'm going to use some data collected by ebikes.ca or the people at Grin Technology. If we look at their data, we can see results for a sample 500 cycle battery, or a battery that's designed to last for 500 cycles, when charged to its manufacturer's rated charge voltage of 4.2 volts. If we charge that battery to only 4.1 volts though, or about 90% of the way, then look at this, we can get closer to 900 cycles out of that battery. And then if we charge to just 4.05 volts, which is about 80% of charge, we could get 1,500 cycles out of this battery, or three times the original cycle life. And you could, of course, go the opposite way, too. You shouldn't do this because it's not safe, but if you were to overcharge your battery to 4.3 volts per cell, you'd get an extra 10% capacity out of it, but you'd cut its life expectancy in half. Plus, it'd be dangerous, so again, you know, don't do that. So now you've probably seen the light and you're saying, oh man, how can I undercharge my battery, too? So the easiest way to do this is with a charger that's specifically designed to undercharge lithium batteries. There's three sort of main common chargers that can do this. The first one, and the one that I have, is the Cycle Satiator. This is a charger created by the guys at ebikes.ca. Now it's a little bit more expensive of a charger, but it does a whole lot of features. You can dial in exactly to the hundredth of a volt what voltage you want to charge your battery to. You can also play with other settings and program profiles, things like that. Uh, if you're looking for a cheaper option though, there are two other common chargers. One offered by LunaCycle and the other by EM3EV. Both of these chargers have switches on them that allow you to choose between fully charging your battery or charging it to a lower voltage. I haven't used either of these chargers myself, I just have the Cycle Satiator, so I can't vouch for those two, but other people have been happy with both of them. Now, before you start undercharging your battery, there are a few disadvantages to this method, and so there are some things to know. The first one, and the one that's most obvious, is you're going to get less capacity out of your battery for each charge. If you're only charging to, say, 4.1 volts per cell, then that's about 90% charge, so basically you're not using about 10% of your battery. Um, you know, the trade-off is that your battery is probably going to last longer, perhaps up to twice as long, but you're going to have 10% less range, you've got theoretically a 10% heavier battery than you need, uh, you paid for 10% more battery than you're using, so, you know, for some people that trade-off is worth it, you just have to decide if, if that's a trade-off that you want to take, sort of losing 10% of your battery to make that battery last longer. The other issue is balancing. Most electric bicycle batteries, in fact almost all of them, will have a battery management system or a BMS inside of them. The job of the BMS, or part of the job, is to keep the cells balanced, and they almost always do this using what's known as top balancing, or balancing once the cells get full. If you're not charging your cells all the way, you're only charging to say 90% capacity, 
then these types of BMSs are never going to balance your cells because they usually start at a minimum of, of about 4.15 volts, but a lot of them just start right at 4.2 volts. So what this means is that over time, your cells will become more and more unbalanced. Now, this isn't disastrous, but what it will do, it'll rob you of some of the capacity of your battery. Because what happens is the BMS will still protect your cells from over discharge. So when the first one gets down to somewhere between 2.5 to 2.7 volts, really depends on the BMS, it'll cut off discharge. But what happens is the, the lowest voltage cell, the one that's like the, low, the, the most unbalanced on the low end is gonna get cut off first. And that means all the other cells still have you know, a decent amount of capacity in them. So even though you might be charging to 90%, after your cells get more and more unbalanced, when that first one cuts off, you might have you know, another 10% left in some other cells. So you might be down to like 80% capacity. Now there is a pretty easy way to solve this problem, and that is simply to occasionally charge to full voltage. So even if you're charging to 90% most of the time, you know, every few weeks, charge all the way up to 4.2 volts per cell, or all the way to 100% capacity, and that will allow your BMS to balance all the cells. Depending how long it's been since your last balance, this might take a while. You know, you might need to let it go overnight or even more if it's been a really long time and your cells are really unbalanced, but this will fix that problem of occasionally having your cells get unbalanced. The next thing to talk about is whether this undercharging is necessary. Now, I see this all the time, that people learn about how undercharging can make the batteries last longer, and suddenly they think, oh no, I'm killing my battery by charging all the way to 4.2 volts. Like, what have I done? I've destroyed my battery. This often is made worse because there are fear mongers out there that are saying, never charge your battery to 4.2 volts. It's terrible, don't do it. That's wrong. Listen, you can charge to 4.2 volts. It's not a problem. This is the manufacturer's rated charging voltage, okay? This is what the manufacturers say, charge your battery to this voltage. This is the voltage that they do all their tests at to determine how many cycles a battery will last. That means that if a battery is rated to 400 cycles, if you charge to 4.2 volts, you're gonna get your 400 cycles out of it. Now, if you wanna do even better, you can undercharge. You, know, you can charge to four volts or 4.1 volts per cell, and you might double your uh, battery life but it is not a bad thing to charge to 4.2 volts. It is perfectly fine. That's the way these batteries were meant to be used. The, the case is that you can simply do better than that. The one exception to this is for long-term storage. Now we talked about how this plating that occurs on the negative side of the, of the battery terminal, that is a factor of time. So the longer a battery spends at 4.2 volts, the more that reaction is gonna take place and the worse it's gonna be for your battery health. That's gonna really reduce the cycles of your battery. So if you're gonna be leaving your battery for any period of time, especially you know, a week or more, you don't wanna leave it at 4.2 volts. If you've already charged it up all the way and suddenly you find you're not gonna be taking it out for a while, the best thing you can do is just you know, try and take it on a real quick loop. You know, take it for a few minute ride and you'll just decrease the voltage per cell. If, even if you can get it down to 4.15, um, that's gonna be a lot better than keeping it all the way charged. But um, other than when you're doing long-term storage, it's really not you know, a huge problem to charge to 4.2 volts. It's really not a problem at all. It's just that you can do better and you can get even more cycle life by charging lower than 4.2 volts. Now, do I charge to 4.2 volts or do I undercharge my batteries? I actually charge to 4.2 volts almost all the time. Almost 100% of the time, I fill my battery to 100%. Blasphemy, I'm sure a lot of you guys are saying. But let me explain why. Now in my last video, I showed you my battery, which is a 52 volt, 20 amp hour battery. This is a little over a kilowatt hour, and it's a pretty big battery. And so what I do is I charge my battery all the way to 100%. That's 4.2 volts per cell. But then I take it on a ride. After I finish my ride, I'm probably down to, I don't know, 4.1 volts per cell, 4 volts per cell, you know, a level that many people will charge to. Because I have a big battery, I've still got a lot of capacity left. So, you know, maybe the next day I'll take a ride again. Now I'm down to, I don't know, let's say 3.8 volts per cell. Maybe now I'm down to almost half of my battery. The next day I'll take another ride. And so it might take me three or four days until I go through my battery. You know, eventually I'll get range anxiety and I'll worry I don't have enough, uh, you know, capacity to make my next trip. And so I'll charge up, but I'll try to wait to charge until not that long before my next trip. But then I'll charge to 4.2 volts. You know, I'll charge it all the way up. I'm not worried about it because I'm going to take a trip soon. Even if it's not for another day, pretty soon my battery is going to be back below 4.2 volts. Leaving it for a day at 4.2 volts isn't a terrible thing. You're not going to kill your battery. Maybe it's the difference between getting you know, 600 cycles and 601 or 602 cycles, but it's really not that big of a difference. The bigger difference comes from when you leave your battery at that high voltage for a long period of time. So if I know that I'm not gonna be riding my bike for a while, maybe I'm going on vacation, 
then I'll definitely make sure I take it out for a ride, get that voltage down, and I aim to get it about halfway discharged. But for just daily use, I almost always charge to 4.2 volts, and I really don't worry about it because it's not that big of a deal. So I hope that information was helpful for you and helped clear up some of these misconceptions about the whole idea of undercharging a battery. Um, if you have any questions, you know, make sure you put them in the, in the comments below. Now one other thing, a while back I made a video showing you guys how to build a light bulb discharger like I had built that allows you to discharge your battery at different currents and to check capacity, things like that. Um, and one of you guys, Steve, actually uh, built the exact same discharger using my instructions. I'd say the exact same, his actually looks better than mine. And he made a video here on YouTube showing how he did it. He did a really awesome job and I just wanted to share that with you guys if you want to uh, see how he did it and follow along. And uh, by the way, if any of you guys ever, you know, follow one of my videos and make something that I showed you how to do it, feel free to share it with me. You know, I'd love to see it. Maybe I'll feature it up here, um, you know, and show other people. So uh, thank you guys for watching. Oh, one more thing, uh, giveaway results. So you guys remember I said from all my, uh, for all my videos from now on, I'll be choosing one random commenter from below the video to win a free copy of one of my books, either DIY Lithium Batteries, like we looked at in this video, or my other book, The Ultimate Do-It-Yourself E-Bike Guide and uh, one random commenter will win one of these books for free. So the commenter from my last video that was chosen randomly was Micah St. Clair. And uh, I promise it was random, it wasn't based on your name, but awesome name anyways. So if you wanna win one of my books, just leave a comment below this video. It can be anything, you can just say hi, or if you have questions you wanna ask, I'll do my best to answer them. And then at the end of my next video, I will announce the winner of uh, the book from this video. If you like this video, I'd love if you'd give it a thumbs up and make sure you're subscribed to my channel so that you'll get updates when I post future videos. Thanks for watching.